Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Let's join together as we welcome our Shabbat angels. Shalom Shalom, everyone, and welcome. We're so glad to be praying with you this evening. I am Rabbi Emily Hyatt. This is Cantor Liz Sachs. And um, this is uh, this Shabbat is a kind of a normal Shabbat. <laughs> it's kind of nice when it's not a holiday or the week before a holiday. Um, it's just it's just Shabbat. And this week was a was a week, so I'm excited to have a Shabbat and to take that deep breath. So let's do it together. As we start to let Shabbat in and make our way into this space, some of the things that we will be thinking about during this Shabbat, we are still counting the Omer and we are in the week of Gevura, which is strength. So think about that lens. We are also spending a little bit of time this Shabbat commemorating Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, and we'll see some liturgy and some moments of reflection and prayer and song about that. And does that fit or match with the idea of Gevura or strength? And where do we put all of those together? The rest of Shabbat, the strength that we are finding in the counting of the Omer and the memory that we are calling into this space. And so with that, Let's begin by lighting our Shabbat candles. the season of counting, of counting days and nights, of counting the space between slavery of the body and freedom of the soul. 
Read with me. This is a season of seeing, of seeing earth and sky, of seeing renewal in the land and renewal in our hearts. This is a season of journey, of inner journeys and outer journeys, taking us places that need us, places that we need. This is the season of counting, the season of joyous anticipation, of wondrous waiting in devotion and awe for our most precious gift, the gift that binds our hearts to each other across the millennia, the gift that binds our souls to God's holy word. of inviting on Shabbat. And we do a lot of inviting in general. We're, we're welcoming people, but especially on Shabbat at this beginning um, section of our service, this Kabbalah Shabbat, we started by saying Shalom Aleichem to the angels, right? We welcomed our Shabbat angels in according to our tradition. And we said Shalom Aleichem. And then we said Boachem Le Shalom, come in peace. Barchuni l'shalom, bless us in peace. Tzeichem l'shalom, and when you're done, it's okay, you can go. And then we say l'chunaranana, come and sing with us. And then we sing l'chadodi, come, let us greet Shabbat. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're going to sing uh, our barchu, which is our call to prayer. And it's just fascinating to stop and think about how much we ask of ourselves and each other and of God when it comes to being together in this virtual for now space. It's really important to us that we're together. Maybe that's why over this past year, it hasn't seemed as if we've been as far physically as we actually have, because every time we come back together on Friday, we spend the first whole like third of our service inviting each other, inviting God, inviting spirituality, inviting ourselves into this space. We really feel welcome. 
And so let's welcome Shabbat in together with Lechadodi.
So like we said before, we have called Shabbat in, we have called the angels in, we are ready now to call each other to prayer with the words of the Baruch Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim. we receive and transmit Torah. At each moment, we are addressed by the world together. In each age, we are challenged by our ancient teaching. At each moment, we stand face to face with truth. In each age, we add our wisdom to that which has gone before. At each moment, the knowing heart is filled with wonder. In each age, the children of Torah become its builders and seek to set the world firm on a foundation of truth. Baruch Ata Adonai Ohev Amo Yisrael. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel.
Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. That there is a better place, a promised land. That the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness and that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. We are walking. We are walking from Egypt toward Revelation. These seven weeks, these 49 days, we are walking and walking together in the light of God. We are walking 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 in the light of God. We are walking. We are walking. We are walking in the light of God. is said, Adonai redeemed Jacob from a hand stronger than his own. Praised are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch ata Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael. Give us a place to rest, Adonai our God. Bring us in to shelter in the soft, long evening shadows of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety, and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch ata Adonai haporei sukat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem.
heart not only of great religion but of significant living without prayer we cannot scale the heights of compassion or reach the peaks of love of our neighbor of which we are called and capable together prayer is a step on which we rise from the self we are to the self we wish to be Prayer affirms the hope no reality can crush, the goal that can never acknowledge defeat. Prayer is not an escape from duty. It is no substitute for the deed. Prayer seeks the power to do wisely, to act generously, to live helpfully. It helps to reinforce the act rather than to replace it. Prayer is the search for silence in the midst of life. Our prayers are answered not when we are given what we ask, but when we are challenged to be what we can be. We rise physically or spiritually as we prepare for the tefillah. <laughs> Yeshua, 
ברוך אתה אדוני בחיי הכל. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושים בכל יום יהללו חסלע. ברוך אתה אדוני הקדוש. We take a moment now for the words that we have not yet said and so we say the prayers that are in our hearts and in our minds and we come back together in just a moment. As we, as community, commemorate the memory of the six million that we lost, we this anthem, this poem, Yom HaShoah Commemorations by the poet Hannah Senesh bravely fought and died against the Nazis and who pondered what it means to be part of a world that is not perfect, that is not always as beautiful as the speech in front of us, but that we can hope, we can pray, can aspire to that beauty, can aspire to that peace, can aspire to creating peace for each and every one of us as we remember so many and give our hearts to what they may have done in our world.
We arrive now at our Torah service. And as usual, let's do a little bit of learning about that Torah reading, about the Torah portion before we actually um, take our time and, uh, and hear the chanting of it. So this week's Torah portion is called Shmini, and it is... Um, it has a couple of different things that happen in the story, but one of them um, is that it talks a lot about the laws of keeping kosher, the laws of kosher, which is the practice um, of eating according to Jewish dietary laws. And those laws, it turns out, are many, and they are detailed, and they're really specific, and they often seem pretty arbitrary. But what I discovered this week is that the language that surrounds the details of the eat this, not that in our Parsha might have something bigger to say. So for example, in <clears throat> chapter 11, verse 44, um, the verse says, for I am Hashem your God, for I am Adonai your God, and you are to sanctify yourselves, and you shall become holy, for I am holy. And you shall not make yourselves impure by eating any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So there's the part of it that's about keeping kosher. But then it says, For I am Adonai who brings you up from the land of Egypt, so that I can be a God unto you. You shall be holy, for I am holy. Wow. One more time. That last line, I am Adonai, I am God who brings you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. Thus, you shall be holy because I am holy. This one verse, besides the part about the creeping things, which we're actually not even going to talk about, it says a lot. Here's the three things that I notice. It is in the present tense. I am bringing you up. From the land of Egypt, Hama'aleh is what it says in Hebrew. I'm God who brings you up, who causes you to at this moment be brought up. That's the first thing. It's strange. Number two, God's giving a reason for the bringing. God says, I'm doing this so that I can be your God. And number three, there's an impact of that. God says, being your God makes me holy, and it also makes you holy. So in other words, what we learn from this one verse about don't eat creeping, crawling things on the ground, which by the way, probably don't do that anyway. What it's telling us is that whatever's happening between us and God is an ongoing experience. And what makes us holy is being in relationship with each other and with God. Now, I have to pause for a second because I have a lot of conversations about God. And I know that I talk about God a lot for a reform rabbi. I know it. And probably I'm going to keep doing it. But when I talk about God, I want to make sure that you know that I'm not asking you to believe in anything specific. You don't have to believe in God at all, in fact. And you certainly don't have to believe in God the way I do which, for the record, changes all the time. Rather, I'm giving you permission to understand this text through the lens of whatever your theology looks like. Whatever God is or isn't to you is okay. So in a second, I'm going to go back to talking about God, specifically about building a relationship with God, but I just want to make sure that you know that it's okay for you to hear that as an invitation to an ongoing commitment to seeking spirituality and holiness in the world. That's it. It doesn't have to be about any kind of God, any specific understanding of God. So here we go. Our verse again says, For I am God who brings you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, and thus you shall be holy because I am holy. And the word brings you up is ma'ale. I am the one who brings you up ha ma'ale, the one who causes you to be brought up. 
Ma'aleh comes from the root Allah, which is a word that we know. It's the same root in the word Aliyah, the blessing, the person who blesses before the Torah. The same word as Aliyah, which means to go to Israel, right? To move to Israel, to go up. But Ma'aleh is the causative form, right? That's a, that's a form. It's called Hefiel in, uh, in Hebrew. And it's, it, it changes a verb to be, I am the one who causes you to be brought up. Now, it's the same word, ma'ale, that we use when dawn is breaking. Ma'ale, the sun is being brought up right now. And fascinatingly, it's also the same word that we use in Hebrew to mean virtue sometimes. A thing that causes you to be brought up, that causes you to rise. So what are we supposed to learn from this, from this present tense causative bringing up? Let's put a pin in it for just one second. Put a pin in the idea that God is bringing us up from Egypt right now so that we can be in a relationship with God. And let's go back to the beginning of our Torah portion, which is called Shmini, which means the eighth day. Why does the Parsha start with the eighth day? Well, when we get to the beginning of this Parsha, the last seven days, Moses has been spending all this time consecrating Aaron and the priests, getting them ready for their service. And today, on the eighth day, that service begins. And the Parsha starts, it says, it came to pass via he on the eighth day that Moses called to Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, let's do this. He didn't really say that. He said, take a bull and sacrifice it. But the idea is this is when the sacrificing begins. But that's why the Parsha is called Shemini. It's the eighth day. And the eighth day is actually kind of a cool idea. It doesn't just mean the eighth day since Moses started consecrating the priests. The eighth day, we often refer to this as the eighth day. Everything that happened after the original, like back in the story of creation, seventh day. We're in the eighth day right now. What does that mean? It means if we go all the way back to creation, here's what we know. We know there were six days of creation. On the first day, God created light via he or. On the sixth day, God made human people like us. And then on the seventh day, everyone rested. And then there was necessarily an eighth day. We took over the work of creation on the eighth day. On the sixth day, God made a pretty significant decision, as we know, to create a being who, just like God, had also the capacity, the power to create. Although there's a huge difference between human creativity, which is something from something, and God's creativity, which is something from nothing. That's why human beings are in the image of God, but not actually gods ourselves. And it's also the same difference between the light, the one that God created on the first day, and the light that we use now in the eighth day. The light of the first day, I'm using eighth day metaphorically, right? It's not like one day, it's eons of time, but this is one big eighth day. The light of that first day was created by God, and the light of the eighth day is what God taught us to create, which is one of the reasons why we transition out of Shabbat, which is the seventh day, and into the next day, the eighth day, by lighting the Havdalah candle. Just like God began by making light on the first day of creation, at Havdalah, we begin every week, we re-enter our eighth day. We begin that eighth day again, the start of human creativity, with light. It makes us partners with God in the work of creation. The Zohar, one of our mystical texts, texts, that's a hard one, asks a question wondering why Jews don't stand still when they pray. We sit, we stand, we bow, we sway, we sit again, we stand, we're all over the place. And the explanation that the Zohar gives is that we're like the flame on the candle. Now, no matter which way you turn the candle, the flame always points up. We're always standing again, though we flicker. But we always end up standing. And so we go back to where we started. We were not brought up 
out of Egypt. God is constantly bringing us up. And we're always looking to go up. We're looking for the dawn to break. We're looking to be spiritually higher, to achieve holiness. And it is because we are in relationship with God, because we are partners with God in the work of creation, trying to make the world a better place every day, one day at a time, that it rings true that God is bringing us up out of Egypt. And it's so that we can be in relationship, so that we can make meaning out of whatever the world throws at us, so that we can be like that flame. No matter which way our candle is pointing, we point up and we are brought up. God is bringing us up. We go up so that we can continue to add light to the world. That's what we do this week on Yom HaShoah as we remember that the world is not automatically up. That there is evil, there is pain, there is suffering, and there is grief, and that people do hurt other people, sometimes in great numbers. And that people do sometimes choose to do nothing and stand silently by. And so all of this, all of these little lessons of our Parsha, the idea that we're in it together with God, the idea that this is a constant journey up out of Egypt, that we are holy because we have that relationship and because we are working hard to make the world a better place. It's because of all of that that we light these memorial candles this week on Yom HaShoah. We remember the six million who perished in the Holocaust and we know that it is no coincidence that those flames also point up. They reach up and they remind us that God is bringing us up and that we bring each other up out of Egypt, out of the Shoah, up out of despair and into this season of freedom that reminds us to help teach the world how to live this eighth day to its fullest. Shabbat Shalom. We move now to our Torah reading, and we call to the screen a number of people that we are excited to honor this Shabbat. We are calling the Booth family, James, Jessica, and Ava Booth, to say our Torah blessings before and after our reading in honor of Ava becoming a bat mitzvah tomorrow morning. We're so excited to celebrate with her. Our Torah reading today from the fabulous Freddie Novin. Uh, who will be uh, chanting from this Parsha for us and our translation today from our Board of Trustees member, Larry Katzen. And so we turn it over to Ava and her family for our blessings before the Torah reading. Baruch Adonai Hambarak Re'elam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Bani Mikohami V'natan Lani Letorato Baruch Atah Adonai Miltin Ha'torah Amen. Vaihu vene aharon. Nada vavihu ish maktato. Vait nu vahem hesh. Vayasimu aleha ketoret. Vayakribu lifne adonai esh sarah. Asher lo tziva otam vatetse esh milif ne adonai vatochal otam vayamutu lif ne adonai vayomer Moshe el aharon hu. Asher diber Adonai lemor, bikrovai kadesh, 
Va'al pene kol ha'am et kaved va'idom aharon va'ikra Moshe el Mishael ve'el el Tzavan pene Utziel dod aharon va'yomer alehem kirvu. Erachem met pene ha kodesh el mi chutz la machane vai krevu vai saum bechu tono tam el mi chutz la machane ka asher di ber moshe. Now Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, each took his firepan, put fire in it, and laid incense on it, and they offered before the eternal alien fire, which had not been enjoined upon them. And fire came forth from the eternal and consumed them. Thus they died at the instance of the eternal. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the eternal meant by saying, Through those nearest to me I show myself holy and gain glory before all the people. And Aaron was silent. Moses called Mishael and Elzaphon, sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come forward and carry your kinsmen away from the front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. They came forward and carried them out of the camp by their tunics, as Moses had ordered. Amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who participated in our Torah service this evening. Mazel tov to the Booth family. We're so excited to celebrate with you tomorrow. And um, and thank you so much to Freddie for your beautiful chanting and to Larry for your excellent translation. We love having everybody participate. And with all of that holiness, we take a pause now for our prayer for healing. And as always, we will pause again in the middle of these two verses of uh, blessing and ask for all of those who you are wishing for healing upon this Shabbat. praying for Zachary Hoffman, David Karner, David Lustig, Jeff Cohn, David Goldenberg, Stuart Myers, Catherine Pless, Jean Silber, Scott Englander, Stacy Hoffman, Kristen Myers, Corey Franklin, Brian John Miller, Phyllis Schulman, Michael Roger Janay, Shirley Glass, Shanti Hazan, Jennifer Brynan, Lynn Pollitt, Howard Rosenberg, Deborah Elenikoff, Alex Busnovetsky, Michael Altenberg, Charles Zandel, Ellie Greenberg, Lori Goldman, Randy Velick, Helena Stryker, Cyril Beinhorn, Jamie Eidelberg, 
Larry Ambrose, and Gary Mobel. I invite you to add in any other names of those that you are thinking of on this Shabbat, those in need of healing, physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever it may be. And we add them to our hearts and minds and we pray with you for their healing. And we say together, Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekor HaRefuah, Blessed are you, Adonai, the source of all healing. service, we come to the counting of the Omer, the counting of the day, the number of the day as we walk from our liberation from Egypt toward revelation at Sinai. And as Rabbi Hayat mentioned at the beginning of the service, we are in week two. And week two is Gevura, strength, judgment, discernment, standing in awe, serving with strength, but always guided by humility. And so what is our teaching? Aligning ourselves with the highest will, grounded in the sacred fire of the earth, so appropriate for our portion this week, we pray to act for the good of all. So what does that mean? Well, uh, that's okay. We can, it doesn't matter which slide we're on. Oh, good. What does that mean? Well, oh, what it means is when we think about Gavura and the idea of strength, one of the things that we, um, that we particularly imagine in our Jewish faith and our Jewish tradition is strength is not, uh, is not a, a one direction characteristic. It is not merely a showing off, a putting out. Strength actually, in, in my head visually, is, is a feeling that's like this. We are both pulling ourselves up and out toward the world and also grounding ourselves very strongly into the ground, into our core to pull up our strength from within and from the idea of God granting us that strength. So that, that is where we get this idea of what it means to have strength going out and strength coming from the bottom. So what is our practice? On this day 13, take time to feel your strengths, to give honor to your abilities, make a commitment to use your power to bring benefit and blessing. And so uh, we quote from our Psalms, we are called to act with righteousness and while being grounded in deep faith. So let's say our blessing, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidshanu bemitzvotah vitzivanu al sfirat haomer. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to count the Omer. So what day is it? Hayom shlosha asar yom shehem shavua achad v'shisha yamim la'omer. Today is 13 days, which is one week and six days of the Omer. And so we continue now as we rise, as we are able with great strength, 
for Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabach l'adon hakol l'tait gedula l'yotzer b'reshit shelo asanu k'goye aratzot velo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem v'gor aleinu k'chol hamonam v'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim Lifne Mahim Hakadosh Baruch. faith in the coming of the Messiah and even if that perfect time is delayed nevertheless I will wait these words these words that were chanted and sung by so many as they marched towards their own demise these words remind us of what it means to bring hope and faith into the face of inevitable destruction. And as we remember our six million on this Shabbat, we bring our own hope and our own faith that their memories will never be forgotten. As we move into our moment of memory, the Mourner's Kaddish, on this Shabbat of extra memory, we begin with the words of Elie Wiesel. He said, how does one mourn six million people who died? How many candles can one light? How many prayers can one recite? Do we know how to remember the victims, their solitude, their helplessness? They left us without a trace, and so we are their trace. And so as always, as we move into this memory, we bring with us the legacies, the stories, the memories, the names of those who we have lost, and we honor those stories by being the trace that is left. And so we begin by honoring those and remembering those that we have lost. In this last week, Henry Strauss and Isabel Make. I just want to say personally, I will miss Isabel a lot. As our regular Shabbat crew knows, she was always there uh, at the beginning and end of Shabbat with a really warm hug. And so we remember her. We remember those that we have lost in the last 30 days. Richard Dick Cook, Erwin Harold Silverberg, Marvin B. Solomon, Daniel Spira, Leonard Streer, and Betty Tremblay. And we add to those names the list of those for whom this Shabbat 
marks the yort site or the anniversary of a passing. Jerome Butch Abelson, Fanny Bellstock, Zuriel Billingham, Andrea Lynn Block, Lily S. Block, Jean Doris Berkowitz, Morris Catalan, Gertrude P. Sherris, Eva Cohen, Bruce Dayfick, Joseph I. Finkelstein, Max Fisher, Elizabeth Hannah Fogel, Ida Friedman, Jack Garrell, Rachel Gilman, William L. Ginsburg, Sheila Shapiro Goldstein, Jerome Gonzer, Dora Goodstein, Blanche L. Gordon, Sylvia Greenberg, Anna Green, Melvin I. Green, Emma Leader Greenfield, Leona L. Harris, Esther A. Harrison, Isaac Isaacson, Erwin L. Jacobs, George M. Jarecki, Rachel P. Klein, Harold S. Kleiner, Benjamin Quartz, Kaya Livschitz, Estelle K. Loop, Irma Myers, Robert G. Milstein, Harry Mintz, Kenneth D. Moses, Johanna S. Hansi Newman, Bernita G. Neustetter, Jack W. Novin, Naoma Pelton, Bella Rifkin, Albert A. C. Rolnick, Louis Rudolph, Rita Pepper Rubin, Gloria J. Rudolph, Mary Samuelson, Lily Newlander Shapiro, Irving Sheroff, Erwin Shulkin, Eleanor Greenberg Silverstein, Ruben Simmons, Richard L. Simon, Walter M. Simon, Marion Ruth Sunshine, Bertha Talpers, Henrietta M. Talpers, Bernard Teitelbaum, Elise Ray Titman, Kurt Tobias, Minnie Walpin, Celia Berman, Weiss. And especially on this Yom HaShoah Shabbat, we add 10 of the 420 precious souls from the city of Colleen that perished in the Holocaust for whom our chapel is dedicated. Frantisek Parkus, Jan Parkus, Julie Parkusova, Marta Parkusova, Zdenek, Parn, Julius Pasch, Ermina Pashova, Rosalie Pasarova, Frantisek Pick, and Carol Pick. And I invite you to remember all those in your life that you are thinking of this Shabbat, whether they are people for whom this marks a Yortzeit, this Shabbat, whether they are people that you have lost recently or whether they are ancestors that you never got to meet because they perished in the Holocaust. We hold them with you. We invite you to type their names in on Facebook as usual. Say them out loud. And if you are in a period of mourning, I invite you to rise spiritually or physically so we can recognize you even though we are in different spaces. And now we all rise physically or spiritually as we are able and join together in the words of the mourners, Kaddish. Yitgadal, v'yitgarash shemei rabba, v'alma divrach irutei v'yamlich malchutei, v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uv'izman kariv v'imru amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevorach le'olam u'le'olmei almaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh, Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shemede Kudisha, Brihu, La Ela, Min Kol, Virchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Be Alma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vechaim, Alenu, Vaal Kol, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bimromav, Huya, A Se Shalom, Alenu, Vaal Kol, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen.
And so a couple of announcements. Uh, before we conclude our service this evening, first of all, Shabbat continues tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, nine o'clock in the morning, young family Shabbat experience with Rabbi Black. That all of the next couple of things are going to be on channel one on the website or the main page of Facebook. That is young family Shabbat with Rabbi Black. That is Torah study with Cantor Sachs and special guest Sheila Reinhold. Um, we are commemorating also Yom HaShoah tomorrow with what we call Zikaron Vasalon. It's an international program that offers small group opportunities to learn with survivors with the children of survivors of the Holocaust and Sheila is one such survivors offspring who will be gracing us not only with her story um, but also with her beautiful music she is a world-renowned violinist and so we are very excited for all of that um, that will be again on zoom if you already registered for the link or it will be on Facebook or the website and then at 11 o'clock community service with Rabbi Black and Cantor Sachs and tomorrow we will be having Ava Booth's Bat Mitzvah Celebration Commemoration Service. Uh, I said a lot of words there. We will be celebrating Ava Booth becoming a Bat Mitzvah at 9 o'clock a.m. That will be on our uh, Temple Emmanuel B'nai Mitzvah page or it will be on channel 2 on the website. Isn't it cool that we have channels? I think it's still so funny. Um, with that, a couple of other things. Don't forget that Cantor Height is going to be teaching clergy learning starting uh, April 28th. Um, the title, which we have not yet said out loud in a service, is The Music and Theology of a Liberating God, Counting Up to Freedom. So don't forget to sign up for that on the WUFU. Um, Arielle Halevi is doing her Women's Empowerment series. That starts on Tuesday, right? Amazing. Um, JFS needs food. We are doing a food drive. Give the food to the JFS. They need it so badly. They have so many people that are still in need. Um, and stay tuned for details of being a little bit in person in May. We are still talking about reopening. Um, and um, we are very excited. We're not, I mean, we're talking about it, but it's happening in May. But the details of which are forthcoming. So stay tuned. And with that, I think we should make Kiddush. That's right. And this week, Kiddush leads to something so much better than last week. So here we go. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Agafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher kitchen mitzvotav eratzavanu Beshabbat kutsho be'ahava uvratzon hilchilanu Zikaron lemasei bereishin Ki hu yom techila lemikrei kodesh Zechel etzian mitzrayim Ki vanu vacharta Ve'otanu kidashta mikol ha'amim Ve'shamad kodshecha de'ahava uvratzon Hinchaltanu baruch atadonai Mekadesh ha'shamad Amen And now we take out the challah. This is our first official blessing of challah on Shabbat after Pesach. Here we go. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen And we conclude our service this evening with a piece of text, with a piece of music that has warmed the hearts and emboldened the faith of so many for many, many years. Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Be'yadu Afkid Ruchi, God is with me and I shall not fear. Adon Olam, Asher Malach,
May it be your will, God, that we take the beauty and the peace and the memory and the community from tonight and we keep it with us as we travel through the rest of this Shabbat and we ask your blessing, God, Tatsi Denu Lishalom, help our steps be steps of peace. Tadri Chenu Lishalom, guide us on paths of peace. And we say together, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you soon.